Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logies. And one of the plants that we grow in the greenhouses that is quite popular and has a place in most indoor collections are citrus plants. We grow quite a few varieties here at Logies and most of them, if not all of them, do very well as indoor plants and container plants. Some of the unusual citrus we grow here have unique characteristics to them that differentiate themselves from a normal citrus tree or a citrus bush as it would be in the home. This is a weeping citrus called citrus sipo. It's a variety that is pendulous, so the plant never goes up, it always goes down. And it makes a wonderful basket plant. The fruit here becomes bright orange, as you can see. We've grown this in a basket. It's a wire basket with a clay pot. And if you are having trouble growing citrus, the first thing you do is change over to a clay pot because they have a high propensity towards root disease. And the clay pot is going to dry down quicker and you're going to get a healthier root system for that. And this plant is about five years old. It took a little bit of training to get that, to do that, not to get it to weep, but to hold it together like this. It blooms reliably every year for us and the fruit quality is very good. This is a very sweet orange. It has a few seeds in it. it, can be used either direct eating, peeling, or can be used for juice. But if you don't have room for the plants to go up, this is a great plant to put in a basket and grow so that it can weep and take up less room. And simply by growing this, if it gets too long, you just trim off the bottom. You need to pay attention to the watering on that. It's a plant that's not on a drip line or irrigation line, so it has to be hand watered. And it gets quite dry over its growing season. And that's the key that actually made this what it is. So it's not a really wet plant. It's something that gets dry, quite dry, and then it gets watered. And then again, it goes down almost every day during the sunny weather. The next plant we have is our Calamundin orange. This is a variegated Calamundin. As you can see, it has variegation to the fruit as well as the leaves. As the fruit ripens, many of our variegated citrus lose their striping as they ripen. Here's one that actually held some of its orange to it. The Calamundin orange or Citro Fortunella is actually a hybrid between an orange and a kumquat. And the fruit is actually quite sour. To the back of me here, we have a Calamundin orange that's been in the ground for I don't know, decades, more probably longer than I've been alive. And you can see the fruit on it. They're very productive. Calamundins have been known to be used as house plants for ornamental use as well as people using the fruit for marmalade or such things as that. Because they fruit so heavy, they put out tremendous amounts of fruit. The flowers, like your edible oranges, are very sweet, unlike lemons and limes, which are not um, as fragrant. And they have a nice bushy habit to them. It's very thick. You can see this plant right here. It has a lot of density to it. And lastly, we have our sweet lemon. This is Citrus ajixu, which is really not a lemon. It's actually a yellow tangelo, and it really is very good eating. Here's one that I have cut open. So as you can see, the fruit is much like a tangelo. It's seedless and very good eating. Sections peel off very easy. And it's really sweet. It's a great plant to grow in containers. As far as culture goes with citrus, they all need as much light as you can give them up to full sun. As I mentioned, make sure that soil gets dried down some in the container between waterings. You can fertilize them during their active growing season, which here starts mm, usually late winter, late February, March, and goes all the way through until September. And then we wean them off so that they're not carrying fertilizer in the soil into the winter time. Um, you can grow them at temperatures anywhere from room temperature all the way down into the 40s, even lower in greenhouses. But we like to keep the temperature around 45 minimum for most of our citrus if we're growing them in cool houses. And also, you have to watch citrus for insects. They are affected by spider mite and scale and mealybug generally are the main problems. Can get aphids on soft growth, but just be aware of that. and catch it before it gets out of hand, whatever the insect that you're dealing with. In the summertime, you can also put them outside. They love that. You'll see once they get outside, they just start growing very rapidly. And you have to remember when you bring that plant in, if you put it into any reduced light, it's gonna have some leaf drop. That's very common. I think that people really get kind of disturbed that they see their plants defoliating some, but that's normal. 
And really what you're trying to do is get that root system through into the, to the late winter when it starts to actively grow. Even if it's lost a lot of leaves, they come right out of it and they fill themselves out and they're back at it again. Well, there's a little bit of information on some of the citrus and our favorites here at Logies. If you'd like more information, visit us at logies.com. Mm -hmm.